<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to this month's meeting of the Hong Kong Philatelic Society and Hong Kong Study Circle, um, as sponsored by FIAP. Uh, yeah, without further ado, I think we have two presenters, or three presenters today, um, who will entertain us with their new finds and uh, their, 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 their research. Um, and uh, I, I think if there's, if there's time left, I, I'll, I shall fill it up with a short presentation. Uh, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I think um, I, I think uh, Adrian in the UK is, uh, is, 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 do you want to start first, Adrian? Yeah, sure, I'll start first. Yeah, okay, right. Uh, so, uh, yes, let, I better stop sharing and uh, you can, uh, you, you can, you can show your, your bit. Now, how do I do this? <laughs> you share, share screen. <laughs> Ah, oh, huh. right. Right, there you go. There we go. Yeah. Um, Let's see, yeah, right. Okay. Where has... One thing I didn't check is... Is where the um, full screen bit's gone. Uh, um, it's down in the bottom right. You have a bunch of little symbols in the bottom right corner of your um, PowerPoint. Yeah. The little yeah. TV screen. If you click on that, it looks like a little TV screen. That starts the slideshow. Yeah, you could. You could ah, you could, yes, that one. The top two. Yeah, I thought it was one at the top, but uh, ah, there we go. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so uh, as you'd already guessed, um, a couple of things of interest came up recently in auction on the China Expeditionary Force. So I thought I'd put together something with other cancellations from the CEF as well. Um, you guys probably all know what the CEF was. Um, but um, there is quite a lot of detail in Edward Proud's book on the history of the Indian Army Postal Service, uh, a full 50 pages, um, over a hundred different cancellations between base office and field post offices, um, most of which were only on Indian stamps, uh, China Expeditionary Force um, being the Indian Army um, that uh, went to China to help um, and fought alongside actually the Chinese Imperial Army to suppress uh, the Boxer Rebellion in around 1900. Um, they were over the Indian stamps were overprinted CEF uh, because Indian troops got a slightly concessional rate on stamps, which wasn't deliberate. It was just an accident of exchange rates. Um, now, Webb says that uh, the use of Hong Kong stamps by the CF was unofficial. Um, but actually, Proud uh, provides some other evidence. Um, and the Hong Kong Post Office didn't object uh, to the use of Hong Kong stamps because it added to their revenue. Why would they? Um, it was the Indian Army Post Office regulations that generally stated Indian stamps should be used. Um, the web illustrates a cover uh, with both Indian and Hong Kong stamps. And this dual use of two countries stamps uh, is a bit of a theme. He, he notes there's, there's others as well. Um, Proud actually provides the full text of a formal announcement that post offices at railway stations in China, including Shanghai Quan, I hope I haven't um, mispronounced that too badly, um, would accept, accept stamps of any nationality with a post office in northern China. So, um, no, <laughs> um, 
And those items would then be hand to, to that country's post office for onward transmission. And, and perhaps that gives us a clue why we get a number of a number of the few known covers, quite a number of them have dual Indian and Hong Kong stamps. Um, so initially these had a five cent additional fee uh, using a, a Chinese stamp over printed five cents by the British Railway Administration. That only happened for a month and then the charge was dropped. But the arrangement to uh, for these railway post offices using foreign stamps continued uh, until September that year. So Webb in his book um, notes uh, a number of base office covers um, and further eight used at field post offices. Now these are the list of the field post offices, the five with known Hong Kong stamps. Um, so Peking, Tientsin, Shanghai. He's got number nine question mark. Well, Proud tells us this was Wei Hai Wei. So it fills that slight gap in, in web. Uh, and Sinho, of which uh, there were several covers. But recently what came to light in auction was two stamps off cover uh, postmarked FPO 14, which is not in Webb's list. Uh, this shouldn't be a surprise, really, because FPO 14 was based in Hong Kong. It was the only FPO that actually, or field post office that actually operated in Hong Kong for a time. Um, this is the first one. It came up at AVA uh, in March. Uh, so FPO 14 was the Indian Army 3rd Brigade headquarters that was based on Stonecutters Island uh, from 4th September 1900 operated on board the SS Sumatra and then uh, way highway until the 1st October 1900 so this stamps dated 14th September 1900 and is therefore used in Hong Kong um, it's a comb type postmark although that's quite hard to see it is um, Webb, for some reason, didn't didn't illustrate the comb type postmark, but provided a number of examples, um, both FPOs and base officers uh, in, in plate 21 of his book. Um, there's a, a plain, the other type of FPO postmarks, the plain one, and he, he shows number 11 as, and calls that type B in his book. I don't have a stamp with the plain FPO postmark to, to show you. Um, then uh, in April, HK PNC sold um, another FPO 14 on a Hong Kong stamp. Much clearer postmark this time. Um, went for a lot more money, $1,700 odd dollars including commission. I did bid for it, but I mean, that was almost, well, that was probably four times what I expected it to go for. And um, uh, I bid $900, which I thought was would, would be comfortable, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> At least two other people interested, more interested. Um, interesting, the AVA stamp was advertised as used in um, Shanghai Kwan, um, but it wasn't. It was used in Hong Kong. This one uh, was actually used in Shanghai Kwan, which is where the Great Wall of China meets the sea. Um, and it was used there during the time of the railway post office scheme. So, you know, it could have been official yeah, because the scheme was official. It's a better postmark. Yeah, it should go for more money, but it's actually... Um, you're probably more likely because uh, that unit of the Indian Army was was in Shanghai Kwan for a lot longer than it was in Hong Kong. Um, so then comes the plain type of uh, base office cancellation, illustrated here in Web as Type A, and um, sold in Ava auctions in March along with the other stamp. Uh, the base office was initially set up in Wei Hai Wei, uh, moved to Hong Kong 
shortly afterwards and, and remain there till 1903. So this this was used in Hong Kong. Um, uh, they then moved to Tientsin. Um, funnily enough, although they were in Tientsin for 23 years, uh, I've not seen any stamps from that period. Um, then comes the cone type of uh, base office. I've shown the pair on the left before. Um, this is from when base office was in Hong Kong. So here we have it, a pair of two cents and a four cent. Um, and then another base office type, base office B, there were in fact three, there was base office C as well, um, which is not known to my knowledge on Hong Kong stamps. This is the picture from Webb. Uh, I don't know why he didn't illustrate a, a, and, and give this a type because it's on cover and it's full postmark, but he didn't. Um, so again, here we have this dual usage. Um, on this occasion, uh, th this cover was, was posted in Shanghai. Base office B was in Tientsin. That was postmarked Shanghai on the 13th. Tientsin on the 14th. Um, so it must have traveled through the night. So it's about 700 miles uh, to get there for the next day. And those are, those are all the known types of postmarks on Hong Kong stamps. Now, if anyone, what I'd love to know is, what I'd love to know is what's on the back of that cover. I'd love to know whether actually that was handed to the Hong Kong post office um, at Tientsin and and it's similar to the railway uh, arrangement, um, whether in fact you often got dual Hong Kong and Indian stamped uh, because the delivery was done through the Hong Kong post office or the rest of the journey was done through the Hong Kong post office. That seems to me the most likely explanation because there seem to be quite a few covers like this. Um, so uh, if anyone has any of these covers, I'd love to see them front and back. Um, so uh, that's that. Uh, has anyone got any questions or comments or anything to add? Uh, hello, Adrian. Uh, Simon Troy here from Hong Kong. Um, Hi, just Simon. some uh, yeah, uh, basic questions because I'm not familiar with this subject. Um, are, are, are those a few post offices uh, mobile in nature or, or, or a, a rather permanent one uh, in, in the huts or in the tent or in the house or in the building, something like that? Uh, the field post officers were with the actual army units. Uh -huh. um, one of the FPO 20 was mobile and it was on, on a train, so on a train. Uh -huh. um, there had been one other mobile, but most of them were with army units. Base oh. office postmarks come from clearing houses so the base where all the field post office posts went to and was then sorted um, you then got a base office postmark as well so they went from field post offices to base office officers so um do you have any further information about the field post office in, in hong kong um no only that it that that particular Hong Kong only had a base office most of the time. Okay, a base office. Base office A yeah, okay. um, was in Hong Kong. Uh, where? Hong Xin Chao? Um, Hong Kutter, I'd have to look Kutter? it up. I'd have to look it up. Um, it is It is in Proud or Web, it does say, whereabouts it, in Hong Kong the base say. office was. Um, there was only ever briefly one field post office in Hong Kong. And that was 14, and that was on Stonecutter Island. Um, okay, thank you. What, what's the, uh, you know, the cover you're showing? It's the one Anna, is one Anna equivalent to four cents? What was the exchange? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what one Anna was the equivalent of and, and what the postal rate was. Uh. Yeah, that would be interesting, actually. I ought to try and research um, 
how far one Anna would have got you, because if it didn't get you to Kent, then it must have come through the Hong Kong post office, which is by the other <laughs> states. Right, right. right. Yeah. In East Africa, certainly at that time, I believe that the exchange, that the, the one Anna was regarded as a penny postage. Mm. Right. At least 1902 or whenever they introduced the East Africa and Uganda series, it was because it was the red stamp. So it was a penny postage. But so, whether whether that's I, I the exchange rate. I forget how many annas there are to a rupee anyway, so. Yes. I can't quite work it out in my head. I'll have a I'll have a look at that. It's a good good question. It, it, it looks like it looks this looks like a combination cover. Uh, it looks like that uh, two uh, four cents equivalent to one anna. So how far would four cents have got this cover from Hong Kong in nineteen oh two? Well, everywhere, everywhere. To the UK. Yeah, yeah, sure. In so Europe. one anna could have got it to Hong Kong. Yeah. Four cents was for UK and Commonwealth countries. Yeah. Imperial rate. Yeah. Right. Well, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it does look as if. I mean, as I say, I'd love to see the back of it, but yeah, it does okay. look as if oh, it's, it's had an hand. Anna to get it <laughs> to the Hong Kong post office. Yeah. I very much doubt an Anna would have got it to the UK. I'll, I'll look that up. Oh, good. It, it's possible. Uh, if he's if, uh, if he's just the empire, they call it the empire rate. Not possible. Mm. Anyway. But one hand wasn't a lot of money. <laughs> well, this one was. It was the you know the the, uh, the empire rate was drastically re reduced, and you think the four cents would get you or oh, e everywhere, uh, uh, all the countries of the, the members of the British Empire. So I mean, you know, you could have could have gone to Africa, everywhere. Yes, oh. I'll have a look at that. Oh. Great, good. Any questions? Um, any other questions before I move on? Okay. Um, let's, let me. Uh, this one's more a question from me. Mm. So Stanley Gibbons has a note where the uh, non-existent SB17 would be, saying that supplies of a $13 booklet containing 10 SG495 were produced for sale. Um, Adrian, we can't yeah. see what um, you're showing. Ah. We, we just see blank, uh, a blank PowerPoint. Okay. Is that any better? Nope. I think you should stop sharing New and share. go to the file that you want to share and then try it again. New share. Now. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. You got it. So, yes, it says they're reported not to have been for sale from post offices in Hong Kong. Now, I, I bought a, a job lot of booklets. Mm -hmm. And, and there was one more booklet than the lot said there was, and it was this, and it took me a little while to work out which one the odd man out was and why. Uh, so I was effectively given this. Someone chucked it in because they didn't know what it was. Uh, has anyone seen these before? Are they? I don't know how they were issued. I, I think I've they... seen it before. Uh, it's, it's very rare because, I mean, it, it's a kind of the, I think that maybe the one dollar they have uh, a surplus of one dollar thirty cents. And they try to get rid of them and put, put them into these booklets. And then you can buy, buy these booklets from uh, 7 Eleven stores uh, outside, uh, you know, the, the outlets. Um, I've seen I've seen mm -hmm. other commemoratives too, but they they're not they're not common. They're not common, you know. The, you know yeah, I, I've been collecting these also, and I I have almost the complete set of the various commemoratives that they use. They had the uh, Hong Kong Shanghai banking uh, centenary or, or anniversary, whatever it was. Um, they had this one mm -hmm. and they had 
two or three others. The one that I'm missing is a dragon boat uh, <laughs> commemorative. That one, I've bid on that at various uh, auctions, including Winston, Ning, and uh, I've, I've never been able to get it. So that would complete the set. But there are, I think there's five different ones, well, five different well, commemoratives. They aren't quoted in SG. Right. Um, yeah. In the SG specialized Hong Kong catalog, they have it as a note to which numbers, which of the commemorative numbers were um, were supplied in these booklets. And, and I think... Uh, as uh, Andrew says, they were only sold at Seven Eleven stores. Oh, so they haven't listed this booklet because no. it wasn't sold at the post office. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the but, but it was issued by the post office. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I mean, yeah. they, they were just given out uh, to 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 the convenience stores. The, you know, you, you know, even now, the, all the booklets are given out to. You can buy the booklets from the convenience stores or different. Ah, uh, right. Oh well, that answers question yeah well, both questions interesting i think i think really it, they they have, must have a must have had a surplus of certain uh, values yes you know that, that if they issued um whenever they issued a commemorative stamps usually the local values will will will, will be sold quickly and then usually the, the five dollars the one that left nobody would want to buy because there they just plainly wasn't a need for five dollar uh, years ago um, but now, as as the postage have gone up, and uh, it, it to 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 the uh, uh, I think what so 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 three or something. Well, I mean, to to US or or Europe, it's all five dollar something. The five dollar stamp has more use. You see, so yeah. Uh, in the old days, uh, the reason why they issued five dollars because I, I I believe the post office just want to make up uh, a, a minimum value of the set. To, to to get some profits, I don't know. yeah, from the stamp collectors. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is, but there's no such postage as five dollar uh, before. But all the, yeah. all the rest, one dollar thirty is obviously uh, to to Europe in in, in those days, to, to the UK and etc. So even then, it wouldn't be that popular through, uh, yeah, as a booklet stamp. Yeah, but it, it's very very interesting. Uh, but yeah. to my knowledge, there's no way to tell a difference between the stamps in those booklets and the sheet stamps that were sold at the post office. I think these are just sheet stamps. They were just they uh, are just sheet stamps. Yeah. I think yeah, that have been yeah. torn up and po pasted into the booklets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I suppose it would be quite easy to fake one rare yeah. one. You'd uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I suppose stamps so. yeah. and... if you've got some sheets of the one dollar thirty. You can yeah, you just you sort of just just split up into replace stuff. it with a common one from a common replace one. Yeah. It, yeah, we replace the the one dollar thirty definitive this one. Also, actually, right. the study of booklets is uh, is an interesting sideline. Um, I've never studied it in in depth, and the early ones, of course, from uh, Edward, I think, was the first one that had booklets. And then uh, the George V and the George V China overprints had booklets, which uh, Ian Gibson Smith displayed. Just mouthwatering stuff. Yeah. Uh, but those are those are the super pricey ones. But then in the Queen Elizabeth era, there are there are some interesting studies of booklets. I have a bunch of them. I've never done much with them, but uh, maybe someday I'll put together a little show for here to yeah. show what the booklets are. Yeah, but it, it, the ones from the '60s and '70s are really uh, complex. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, there's one one further thing. I was um, you share. Oh, this is the way to do it. Finally, you are screen sharing. Yes, this was one for Philippe, really. <laughs> so I hope he sees this after. Okay. Um, so I found uh, a U.S. naval marking that that isn't on the uh, website. Um, so it's USS Endicott, uh, a destroyer, crew of fewer than three hundred men. Um, 
So after escorting landing ships into the Med, uh, 1944, um, she's one of the few destroyers who actually sank a German German warship, in fact, two German warships and a German merchantman uh, off the coast of France, um, was hit. Uh, luckily, the, the shell failed to go off. It, it, even not going off, it put a very big hole in the side of the ship. Um, so quite an interesting ship. Uh, also uh, escorted uh, President Franklin Roosevelt. Um, and then got converted to a high-speed minesweeper and came out to the Pacific, um, based in Okinawa, uh, ridding the Yellow Sea of Mines. Uh, and during this period, she did call into Hong Kong. Now, in this period, unfortunately, newspapers are not very helpful. You know, they used, before the war, they gave details of all the naval ships in 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 the port. Um, very shortly after the war, I mean, the newspapers had only just restarted. Um, I don't know if it's still considered uh, a little bit, uh, a, a little bit too. Uh, what would you call it? Um, well, they didn't want confidential. Confidential, yeah, didn't, knowing which ships were where. Um, so there was, there's no. I've, I've searched the newspapers. There's no note in the newspapers of the ship coming to Hong Kong. Uh, so I wrote to uh, the US um, Naval Archives, and they very kindly provided me a copy of the ship's log, which showed that actually she did steam into Hong Kong Harbor on the morning of the 7th December. Um, so she was in Hong Kong for a few days. And here's the cover. Um, so most of these covers have the name of the ship in the postmark. In this case, it just has U.S. Navy mm. and Hong Kong, China. Uh, but at the top, it tells you that uh, who sent it and that he was on the Endicott. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if there are other ver other covers known from this ship, but you know, it wasn't in Hong Kong for very long. Nor would it be obvious unless someone put the return address in um, where, where the, you know, which ship this actually came from. But she then uh, saw further action in the Korean War, uh, eventually sold for scrap in 1970. So, yeah, one for Philippe. Is that, is that actually a ship uh, postmark? Well, it's a U.S. Navy postmark, yeah. So yeah, all but... the other ships say the name of the ship. Oh, okay. Around yeah. the outside, this says just U.S. Navy. Yeah. So but where, these where, were where was the, post where... officers on board the ships. Oh, on board the ship. Um, because they, because we used to have a, a fleet club, and then some of you in Hong Kong remembered that the the, the, the the fleet club has has had. A, a U.S. Uh, post office inside, and had a, 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 a cancellation with a number. Oh right, yeah. So the, all the say all the sailors and all ships wish visiting Hong Kong, and they could have uh, uh, posted something back home uh, from the uh, the fleet club uh, U.S. post office at the domestic rate. That's interesting. I've not seen. Yeah, they, I've they not seen. They, they have uh, uh, they had the US stamps. They use US stamps. I don't yes, because how... normally a, a ship with a post office yeah. in a in a harbor would use the stamps of that country when they were in that harbor. That's right. I assume that there's an exemption for naval, you know, yeah, ships the, the, yeah. which remain uh, the territory of that country, don't they? Yeah. The building, the building actually is still there. The fleet club, fleet club building, but it's now obviously nowhere near the the, the seafront. I mean, it's it's uh, it, there, there, there's <laughs> some some land being rebuilt, and it's it's a kind of uh, near. <clears throat> it's, it's sort of uh, now it's, it's inland, but the, the yes. building is still there, although it's not occupied, and probably uh, I think due for demolition very soon. 
Yes, I, I think the Hong Kong Bank and Standard Chartered were they on the seafront once upon a time? Yeah. Those yeah. sites, not those buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So thanks, thanks for sharing. So that's it. So Eric, thank, for thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, any, any further questions from, from anybody? If not, Very cool cover, that last one. Yeah, yeah. I Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, uh, we'll move on to the next presenter. And I believe Simon, uh, Simon Choi has uh, some something to present. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me share the screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, today I'm going to continue my one day stem, one story, uh, number three. And the uh, topic uh, will be about uh, Officer Pei Shangshui Po, the second type. And uh, I'm Simon Tri from Hong Kong. Okay, a little bit of background of uh, Shangshui Po Post Office. It was opened uh, on 55. Winchow Street, Central Po on uh, 8th of August 1956, and with uh, the starting and delivery functions uh, because the, the current post office uh, the, the bed was uh, uh, heavily loaded at that time, and also because of, of the new development uh, uh, in the Northwest uh, current region, um, more and more uh, 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 public uh, housing and residents and, and Everything is, is developing in that uh, region. And so, uh, new post office, uh, inside a new post office building, uh, which, which was a, a six story high building, uh, 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 which, uh, which also housed some other government departments, including the, the uh, uh, urban services department, the, the health office, uh, the labor department, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, in short, uh, the central post office needed to handle official mails because of the uh, other government departments uh, upstairs or nearby. And uh, therefore, initially, um, the central post office was allocated with, with an official paid day stamp, a 30 millimeter skeleton type uh, of, uh, yeah, and, and this is the first type of the official paid day stamp. And uh, I, I covered this uh, uh, skeleton type, uh, the first type uh, in my last uh, presentation. So, um, one final word about the, the, the skeleton type is that um, it was used abnormally for, for, for quite uh, a, a much longer period of time than the, the usual uh, purpose of, of, of this skeleton type, which should be of temporary uh, purposes. And yeah, the, the second type official page Shang Shui Po uh, day stamp uh, has been recorded uh, after the first skeleton type. Um, from, from existing records, um, there, there, there is no overlapping of usage period. And in fact, uh, the time gap uh, in between uh, it is quite large, uh, uh, around two years. And uh, this second type is a double ring type uh, of 27 and 16 millimeter with an index number one. And in fact, uh, if you search, uh, if you do research uh, about uh, the information of this postmark, uh, it's difficult to, to find a lot of information. Um, the, the earliest one that I, I, I could find out is this from the Study Circle Journal 270 in 1989. It uh, mentioned about uh, an official patient report, uh, CBS, and uh, uh, with number one. Uh, index and and the record date uh, uh, is uh, 21st of May 1969. It also provided an illustration of, of the layout of that uh, uh, postmark. But of course, at that time, the the, the um, Hong Kong Study Circle Journal uh, uh, was was printed in black and white. And then uh, afterwards, uh, there, there there exists a few other publications publications uh, uh, mentioning that. Uh, Double ring type, uh, shuttle official pay based stamp. 
um, the, the next one is the Yip Chang and Ocean, uh, which uh, is an um, un, unpub unpublished uh, a draft of a monograph. And in fact, uh, it includes two dates. Um, the first one is the 1958. And then the second one is the same date uh, as mentioned by the study circle. The, the first date, 1958, it, it, in my opinion, I, I think uh, it, it should be an era. It, it, that date should be from a skeleton uh, type uh, uh, of the surface of the design instead of the doubling type. And then uh, in, in Proud's book, uh, the, the second edition in 2004, uh, it also mentioned about that uh, they stamp and, and, and and Prow used the OP, uh, SSP OPD uh, two, and then uh, only the same date, the twenty first of May, nineteen sixty nine, uh, it is reported. And uh, the third uh, source of information uh, is uh, in the set of books uh, uh, called the Hong Kong Post Office and Postal Cancels uh, 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 by uh, the Hong Kong Post and also the the, the China Philatelic uh, Association. Uh, it pro provides an illustration uh, of uh, yeah, a, a, a similar piece or similar image of that postmark uh, uh, to the Hong Kong Study Circle uh, image. And then uh, in the Hong Kong Study Circle uh, Journal uh, printed 12 uh, in the year 2000, it, uh, yeah, it repeated uh, that uh, finding of, of the dissertation triple uh, base stamp. And mentioned that neither cancel type, uh, I, I, it means the official page something for cancel type and is recorded by Web or Prow. Okay, so um, in other words, uh, for all the all those uh, publications or, or available information, the only date uh, provided uh, is 21st of May, 1969. Okay, then uh, let us examine uh, those uh, uh, the, the uh, examples of that date. Okay, from two sources. The first one is the Hong Kong Study Circle uh, on, on the top, and then the, 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 the lower one is, is, is the image from, from the Hong Kong Post and Postal Council uh, the, the volume one. And I try to overlap the images, and uh, well, in fact, they, 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 they fit very well. And I'll say that those two images uh, belong to the same source or, or the same cover. And then, as I just mentioned, um, the, the unpublished uh, a monograph uh, by uh, Prao Yip and Chang, and uh, uh, no, no, not, not Prao Yip and Chang, uh, oh, uh, Chang Yip and Ocean, it mentioned, uh, it, it also uh, illustrates uh, a cover, in fact, a cover. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, at uh, that time, it, it is also in black and white. Uh, uh, having that official page, Chang Triple Double Ring type based on. And also of the same date, 21st of May, 1969. And uh, it's interesting in love uh, that both examples of that uh, cancellation of the same date are having similar things. For example, uh, in the address line, there are some uh, letters, P-O-R-A-T-I-O-N in both examples, and also I-N-G comma in both examples. And, and then I tried to, to compare these two examples. And so I, 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 I recolored uh, the, the Hong Kong study circle one in red, uh, while the U chain and potent one, I, I, I maintained it in, in black to do the comparison. And and what I try what I, I was trying to do uh was, was was to compare the size of the letters, uh not not lot of the cancellation but of, of the address lines, so I resized it, uh, the cancellation the date stamps into the same size, and and then uh, uh overlapping overlapping them together to make sure that they are the same size, and then I put aside the two images to compare those uh, same letters on the address lines, P-O-R-E-T-I-O-N. You can see that when, when, when the two cancel letters are of the same size, the letters of the address are obviously different. So they should be from different typewriters. 
In, in other words, these two recorded samples of the double ring type central pole of this okay are having the same date. And they uh, and, and interestingly, they are having a, a, a parcel uh, address, uh, having the same 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 letters, uh, like the P-O-R-E-T-I-O-N, and then the next line is ING common. So uh, apparently they 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 were from the same batch of, of, of letters sending from a same government office, but to different address addresses, and and therefore they were posted at at, at central post office on the same days. But because uh, the font size of the letter size of these two examples are different, in other words, I I can only conclude that uh, they came from different offices. Because uh, they 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 were using different typewriters. I, I do not think uh, in the same government in in one government office at that time uh, it, it 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 would accommodate more than one typewriter. So uh, was it a pure a uh, coincidence that uh, uh, two different government offices, uh, and both of which are uh, uh, were located near Shamshui Po, and 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 and. Each of them posted uh, an official mail on the same date. I think it's just so, so interesting and 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 just what 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 a coincidence. And uh, there are somewhat interesting things about the cover, the recipient. Uh, the recipient uh, uh was typed uh, American Engineering Corporation. So, what is it? If you search in, uh, if you do research on 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 uh, Google or uh, in or other uh, internet browsers, you it, it will display a, a company called American Engineering Corporation, and we have a website, and it is an existing uh, company still operating, but uh, it was registered in Okinawa of Japan, and 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 the the chief of the company is the Kenneth Mark is is and uh, there is a logo of that company and also a short uh, description of that company. And it was uh, registered in Okinawa in 1964 and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, based on the purchase of the Okinawa branch of Hong Kong based American Engineering Federated, et cetera, et cetera. And then that, that uh, AEC in Japan uh, is in the business of, of uh, installing uh, air conditioning, uh, uh, centrifuge compressors, uh, uh, it pump systems, etc. And uh, because of a slight difference of, of the name of that company, then I I I, I did further research on on, on uh, similar names of, of, of that company, and I found another similar name called American Engineering Corp Federal in Corp USA, and uh, that company in fact. Uh, was a uh, one of the companies, uh, American companies set up in China in Shanghai, under the Sino-American Treaty of Friendship, Commerce, and Navigation, uh, which was uh, effective from the 30th, uh, 30th of November 1966, uh, 1946, and uh, that American Engineering Corporation Federal in USA in China in Shanghai in in fact uh, as a name called. Uh, in fact, Pakitai uh, is the, 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 the brand Frigidaire, uh, which, which is quite famous uh, at manufacturing uh, refrigerators. And, uh, and, and in fact, that Shanghai company, uh, that US company in Shanghai, put it correctly, uh, in, in fact, was doing business in, in China before World War II because I, I, I can. I can I can find this advertisement in some magazines uh, in 1937, 1939, uh, advertising is key product. Uh, in fact, it is the refrigerator, uh, refrigerator. And uh, at, at that time, uh, it, it, it could provide five years protection by General Motors. And the distributors of, of, of that fridge, uh, in fact, was Bring On Company and Sincere Company in Shanghai. Okay, then how about in Hong Kong? I, I, I did some company search uh, a, a company search uh, uh, in, in the Hong Kong government's uh, company's registry. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I could find uh, that 
American Engineering Corporation Federal in USA, registered in Hong Kong in 1947, and it ceased uh, business in 1982. So um, uh, I, 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 I I did some further research uh, of uh, Parcel Lane uh, American Engineering uh, in Hong Kong government's uh, company registry, and, it, <laughs> and surprisingly, it, it displayed Sindabi Hong Kong Finance Limited. And uh, but uh, uh, un under uh, that listing, uh, there, there, there is a lame history, and it started from a 1972 company called American Engineering Corporation Hong Kong Limited, and then uh, uh, added the Chinese name, similar the same as, as as very similar to to the one in China Shanghai Auto Corp. Uh, yeah, in the dangerous frigidaire, the, the brand of, of the refrigerator. And then it changed to, to Sindabi in 1996. So I, I believe that cover may be uh, 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 addressed to, to that American Engineering Corporation Federal in USA in Hong Kong. Okay, and then let us look at the address. It, it just simply type Prince Building, Hong Kong. And my question is, uh, uh, is it too simple and ambiguous? And because uh, that 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 there, there's no floor or room number or, or, uh, in the address, and uh, I I'm just wondering whether it could be delivered. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think most of you may may, may, may be aware that the uh, Prince Building is it, quite a uh, large building at that time, the twenty nine story building, uh, opened in 1965, and with uh, the, the first few floors uh, used it, uh, for 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 shops. And it's especially for for those luxury brands and and, and up uh, upstairs in up uh, up cell, uh in, 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 in that twenty something uh, floors, a uh, lot of them are are, are, are uh, firms are from 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 uh, from the law firms, accounting firms, medical offices, etc. And yeah, you can see that it's quite quite a large building. So without the, the floor and room number, could that letter or could that postal item? Uh, be delivered. Not also an interesting manuscript on the cover. I'm not sure what 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 it means. Is it returned the letter office or that letter office something like that? I, I have no answer because I I can only uh, uh, I, I I I only have the image of, of this cover in black and white from 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 Lip Chen and Rosen's uh, uh, monograph. And then um, the originating department, uh, it was from Public Works Department, Electrical and Mechanical Office. And uh, where was it located? From the any report uh, of uh, Public Works, uh, from, from the Electrical and Mechanical Office uh, of Public Works Department. Um, the department's main office, in fact, uh, had been in Harcourt Road in Central, and then it moved it, uh, the, Late 1964, uh, to Caroline Hill, on uh, Hong Kong Island, and also Song Wong Toy Road in Kowloon, and the, these uh, are the the main uh, locations of, of that electrical and mechanical office at that time. And it also means about uh, maintenance work are uh, carried out by staff posted uh, to government buildings uh, and projects, but. But I, I I could not find any information about any sub office of that department or, or, or of that electrical and mechanical office nearby Shamshui Post. So uh, e even if if uh, there there was uh, some uh, maintenance staff posted to to the Shamshui Post Post Office building, but those staff, according to to the annual report, should be carrying out maintenance work only. So. Uh, did, did such a uh, uh, maintenance engineer or technician uh, need, need to post official mails to, to an engineering firm in Prince, Prince, Prince Building? I doubt. So um, in, 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 in conclusion on, on, on this cover, uh, I, 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 I would say uh, it, it's, it's not very natural, no matter from, from, uh, from, from the date, 
uh, from the originating department from, from the uh, recipient is, uh, to, to me, is quite obvious. I, I'm not saying that it, 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 it's not a genuine cover. It's obviously it's a genuine cover. But I, 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 I'm just wondering whether it was posted to that type of code. Anyway, unless uh, go to another example. Uh, another one uh, it is uh, 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 simply an uh, official uh, OHMS uh, uh, bill from, from uh, in fact, it, 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 it was from the agriculture and fishery department uh, to, to, to a fishing uh, company in the world. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, I think it, it, it discovered it's quite natural. And, and, and in fact, uh, it, it, it was mentioned in the Hong Kong Philatelics Society's newsletter in uh, 2018. And then another example, uh, in fact, uh, uh, it, it is a reply card uh, from also from the uh, Agriculture and Fisheries Department. Uh, sending to, to Singapore, sending to the Central Research Station of Singapore. And this is the postmark, uh, yeah, dated uh, 1967, April the 20th. And in fact, uh, this date uh, is my earliest recorded date. So um, the, the recipient, the Central Research Station, uh, 10 and a half miles, Sambo one Singapore, uh, in fact, uh, it, 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 it was an institute under the Climate Production Department or the Project PPD of, of, of Singapore. And uh, it was uh, having facilities to do the research and develop technologically advanced uh, intensive and productive methods to help farmers and fishermen. Um, that central research station uh, inside inside the station, inside that, that area, uh, 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 that there was a farm school uh, to provide uh, very good courses, uh, lectures and trainings and discussions. And I, uh, I can also find uh, some pictures of, of, of the central research station and also the farm school. Uh, another example, uh, uh, bearing that covering, uh, uh, covering type of official page on the proposed map uh, is an aerogram, uh, an official aerogram, also sending to Singapore. And uh, also from the Agriculture and Fisheries Department and uh, the date, uh, 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 was 1969 March 4, and uh, it was sent. It was it sent to Director of Primary Production, uh, of Singapore, uh, which I just mentioned about that that uh, PPT. And uh, the inside the 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 aerogram, it mentioned about the request uh, for quotation of a hemisphere used it, uh, in, in, in that department of Singapore, and and and. Uh, Apparently, uh, Hong Kong's uh, agriculture and fishery department was, was an organization within the region who, who could help uh, that Singapore uh, uh, government department. So uh, a few facts, uh, a simple uh, short, short uh, introduction about the basic uh, facts of Singapore at that time. And after World War II in 1946, Singapore was excluded from the Federation of Malaya and became a separate British colony. And then in 1959, Singapore became a self-governing self state within the British Empire. And uh, the Ministry of National Development was established. And then uh, under that ministry, um, there, there, there was a primary production department, uh, which was formed to provide coordinated approach to develop and uh, to developing and regulating the local farming and fishing industries. So um, it, it is a peer uh, uh, function uh, of the of Hong Kong's agriculture and fisheries department, and uh, I, 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 perhaps in 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 that time at that time in 1965, uh, because Singapore uh, uh, became an independent sovereign country, so uh, its separation from Malaysia uh, meant the loss of Singapore's economic hinterland, and also it lost the use of natural resources from from Malaysia. So Singapore need to rely on its own to develop, prosper, and sustain. So it uh it it, it needed to to ask for help frequently from 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 uh nearby uh organizations, especially uh asking for help from Hong Kong because I suppose Hong Kong's government is quite uh, helpful and 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 and, and could uh, provide the the 
relevant knowledge and skills to, to Singapore at that time. Okay, one question. Uh, where was the agriculture and fisheries department located? Because uh, I, I just uh, briefly described about several couples and most of them uh, were originated from the agriculture and fisheries department. In fact, where was it located? And according to available information, the official address, in fact, was at Cambridge Court, 84, Waterloo Road. And that building, the Cambridge Court at Waterloo Road, in fact, was uh, 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 started uh, its occupation of uh, tenants or, 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 or owners uh, from July of 1965. And according to the annual report of, of the department, uh, they moved in that address as its headquarters in, in August of 1966. And uh, the, the agriculture and fishery department's uh, headquarters in, in fact was uh, on, the, on, on the second floor of, of that building. But if you look at the map, uh, and if you put in, uh, pins into all those locations, uh, you will be surprised that the Dutch Cambridge Court at Waterloo Road, in, in fact, was relatively far away from Shamsui Post Office. And, and also, uh, there were a few uh, branch post offices uh, uh, closer to, to Cambridge Court and, uh, for example, the Wang Kong Post Office, the Chang, Changsha Street Post Office, or the Yamate Post Office, uh, which were all closer to, to Cambridge Court yeah, then, then, then the Shamsu Post Office uh, to the Cambridge Court. Were, were, were those couples posted very technically or deliberately? And uh, my, my answer or my, my, my feeling is that it's very unlikely, except for the ENM office cover. Then why were the official mails from, from, from that department at Cambridge Court, uh, if, 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 if it's true? Uh, why, why were those mails brought to some triple post office at Intro Street, uh, which were quite far away, instead of to, to the closer ones? And uh, I, I was uh, puzzling about that, that question for, for quite a long time until uh, one day I suddenly uh, uh, came over one of my items. In, in my first covers collection, uh, which is this Shang Shui Po Hong Hong era days that cover, because the, the address, it was addressed to um, Ridas one uh, of Agriculture and Forestry Department at Lord Carlin Magistracy Building, Lord Cambridge Court, at Taipo Road. Okay, and and which means um, that 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 was as an office of that department in North Carolina Magistrates Building. Although the year is 1963, while, while, while uh, in, in late 1960s, uh, the, the, the uh, headquarters uh, was in Cambridge Court. But I, I believe that uh, that department uh, were still maintaining that uh, maintaining an office in, 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 in the North Carolina Magistrates Building. All, only the, the headquarters uh, staff were located in Cambridge Court. And, and uh, about the name of the department, in fact, in 1964, it was renamed uh, as a uh, culture and fisheries department. So um, this is one of the missing piece of the puzzle uh, because uh, it, in fact, uh, it, uh, it, it's office in, in, in North Carolina Mr. Tracy building, in fact, was quite near to the Shanghai Post Office. Okay, then how about two types of official pay shamsui uh, CPS. In fact, uh, you, except uh, GPO and except uh, those uh, machine cancelled, shamsui Po in fact was the only branch office having two types of official pay pay step. And, and, and that uh, the scheduling type uh, was being used continuously for, for, for quite an abnormally long period. Um, around eight years. But why was it changed to another type after after such a long period? Was it due to uh, the advertency of, of the postal card at Shantri Ho? 
I, I, I proposed some wild thoughts uh, in my last uh, presentation. For example, uh, maybe a permanent one uh, and perhaps the central pole had already arrived uh, a few months after opening in of, of central pole post office in 1956, but uh, the, the, the scattering type I was not requested for return. And, and then the, the clerk I did not bother to use the new one. And, and then uh, as time passed by, the clerk had forgotten about that permanent one. And, 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 and then finally, uh, 1965 or perhaps later, the clerk was suddenly awakened or reminded from, from uh, reminded by some senior staff to use the new one. Well, <laughs> I, I have no, no, no answer on that. Another direction of, of answering this question is uh, what was the change due to some postal related events? And uh, I, I, I tried to find out uh, some uh, relevant events during that period. The first one, in fact, uh, was the opening of the Chiang Sha Wan Post Office. And uh, that Chiang Sha Wan Post Office was opened in 19, 1966. Um, that uh, the, the, the newly established the Chiang Sha Wan Road because of the new reclamation uh, outside Chiang Sha Wan Road. And it was not only a regional post office. In, in fact, it, 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 it was designed to be a big post office uh, and, 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 and designated as, as a regional post office. And also having the shopping and delivery uh, functions transferred from the Chiang Sha Wan Post Office upon the old the, the first day of opening of the Chiang Chiang Sha Wan Post Office. So uh, you you can uh, see from from some news clipping at that time that uh, that Chiang Sha Wan Post Office uh, uh, was a very a large one, uh, and and also is a regional office, and also it, it would be equipped with uh, uh, advanced uh, and very uh, complete uh, facilities inside the GPA to perform all 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 all. all uh, the, the, the functions. And so uh, my, my uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I was wondering where, where did, uh, the, the Shamsi Po uh, skeleton type CTS, I, I mean the first type, was transferred out from Shamsi Po uh, together with the shopping and delivery functions. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, be, be, because uh, why, why I, I, I asked that question uh, uh, is it, because Basically, only the uh, post office having the sorting and delivery functions would have a dedicated official pay they staff, like Lock Point, like Kowloon, uh, of course, GPO, and then Shamshay Po. And uh, let's uh, investigate a little bit more about the, the government offices in that northwest Kowloon region. And, uh, in, in fact, except for the uh, post office uh, itself, that there was no government departments in, inside that Chiang Sha Wan post office building. O only barrack accommodations and quarters. And, and, and this is uh, a clipping from, from the uh, Public Works Department annual report uh, saying that uh, that, that, that a building uh, will, will have some shopping facilities on, on at the ground at the floor. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, in, in, in the upper floors, uh, you have uh, very accommodation and for very quarters of, of the urban services department, etc. And nearby, uh, Shamsha Po Post Office nearby in Chiang Street. In, in fact, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, that 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 was a not current Tracy building, and that building, in fact, it still exists uh, today. But uh, of course, of the occupied by, by other parties for, for other purposes. And, and that means uh, even if the Shamsha Post Office uh, was requested to forfeit uh, its official pay they stand, it still needed to handle official mail. Uh, but without a dedicated uh, official pay they stand, it can still cancel the, the official mail, so like a long post office, type of post office, CMRT post office, etc. Because uh, yeah, they can they just simply uh, cancel those OHMS mails uh, using their normal day stamps in, in, in black ink. But in, in fact, in fact, some triple post office still got a dedicated office of day stamp, which is the second type. 
And then uh, the, the second uh, coastal related events that I, I, I just uh, found out uh, uh, last month, uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, was the restricted usage of the skeleton type CTS. Uh, if, if you look back uh, to the usage of the skeleton type, uh, in fact, it started uh, uh, not, not, not counting the, the PMG uh, uh, usage of, of the skeleton type. Uh, uh, the skeleton type uh, was used in branch post office in, aside from 1953, uh, uh, one up to uh, the last uh, branch of branch post office of World War in 1963. And then for some temporary uh, event or the, for, for some uh, uh, important events in Hong Kong, uh, uh, in which the post office uh, has uh, provided a, a temporary post office inside that conference, like the, uh, the cafe in 1955, and then the Jamboree, uh, the Scouch Jamboree uh, in 1962, and then uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the University of Hong Kong uh, uh, Golden uh, Anniversary in 1961, etc. And also, uh, it, it, has been used in the execution POs uh, uh, inside the, the uh, Hong Kong product exhibition venue, starting from 1954 to the last uh, uh, expo in uh, 19. Uh, I started from 1954 to to, the, to, to 1964, but but because that uh, expo uh, in fact uh, uh, well, uh, usually was was around one month uh, from. December to, to January of next year. So the uh, last day of, 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 of uh, the scheduled type uh, PO, uh, in fact, uh, was uh, 1965, January the 8th. And that date was the last date of using the exhibition uh, of the scheduled type day stamp in the exhibition PO. Because uh, in the next exhibition, uh, started uh, from 1965, a new double ring type exhibition PO CTS uh, 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 was used. Uh, in fact, not not not. Uh, uh, in fact, only the index one was deployed for both ordinary and registered mails. So, if you compare it to the official patient table, they they look quite quite similar. Okay, you can see that. Uh, also, uh, in, in around the same same period, uh, they they changed it from the skeleton type to, to the double ring type. So, what a close resemblance! And uh, more about the double ring type, uh, and and as I just mentioned, from from the nineteen sixty five onwards, uh, to the last one in nineteen seventy three, uh, the the exhibition PO base stamps uh, uh were reused. Uh, the double ring type uh, base stamp were used. And on, only index number one has been recorded for all of those years. And then another uh, uh, um, uh, temporary PO uh, 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 having a day stamp uh, in fact, uh, were the convention appeals. And um, uh, the first one uh, uh, was used in 1965. And, and, and in fact, there were four convention appeals in in the years of 1965, 69, 1970, and 1971. And in all those four conventions, um, the temporary POs uh, were having two day stamps, number one and number two. And uh, yeah, sometimes the number one uh, uh, was used for registered mail and, 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 and number two for ordinary uh, mails, but, but sometimes they, they will be changed. And that there's not a strict rule on, on the, the usage of, 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 of the index one or, or, or the index number two. And yeah, so the earliest usage of, of that double ring type uh, CDS for temporary PO, uh, in fact, was in 1965. And uh, and, uh, and yeah, this 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 uh, date of uh, September 18 for 1965, in fact, uh, was a few months earlier than the exhibition PO. Which was started in the December of that year. Uh, but in fact, the scheduling type of what was uh, reserved for temporary uh, or, or long, uh, uh, events or for long recurring or uh, for occasions uh, of long recurring nature, like uh, the 1971 Jamboree, 
uh, which has been used once, and then the 1976 uh, Jubilee, which is uh, which used only once, and also the Shang Wu Hui uh, event in 1976 and as well. So, uh, Timeline of relevant events. Uh, I I I talk a uh, um, a lot of events and and, and talk, uh, quite a lot about, about all all this happening. So I summarized it, uh, those things in, into a timeline, and uh, simply, uh, from nineteen fifties to uh, September of uh, nineteen sixty five, the scheduling type A stamps uh, were used for for temporary post offices or for a short period of time usage. And then afterwards, uh, it was changed to covering type A stamps. And uh, I have some imagined scenarios. Uh, during during uh, 1964 uh, to 1965, uh, just, just, just my wild uh, uh, guess, uh, the post office department may uh, have discussions about the fate of, of the central post, uh, official pay day stamp uh, because of, of the opening of the Chongqing post office. And at the same time, uh, there, there was a new policy about the restricted use of the skeleton type CPS. And therefore, um, the last usage of uh, official pay assumption pool and uh, the execution peel skeleton type uh, uh, was in 1965. And afterwards, uh, they were changed, changed it to, to double ring type. And, uh, and, 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 and then the double ring type uh, uh, were used in the uh, uh, temporary uh, or the convention events or exhibition events in subsequent years, and and that and those day stamps were reduced. And for Changsha One and Changsha Po, and because Changsha One uh, did not have enough mail wallets to just by dedicate official day stamps, so uh, up, up till now uh, there, there there is no record. Uh, no record has been a uh, uh, low, low, low record has been found. Although at any Changsha One official pay day stamp, I, I, I do not uh, believe that uh, it exists. But in fact, some people call it new one, which, which, which uh, was the prevailing couple of So um, the second type, Changsha Po uh, official pay Changsha Po day stamp, uh, in, in fact, uh, ended a period of usage in the late uh, 1960s. And uh, that day and in fact, uh, was in line with the gradual phasing out of the dedicated uh, day stamps at large in all post offices. And I think this is also the post office department's uh, policy. So this is the end of my presentation and uh, thank you for uh, watching and uh, listening. And uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions yeah. or suggestions. Yeah, uh, fantastic, uh, well-researched uh, presentation. Uh, I, I just uh, just a word about uh, what's that American company in the Princess Building? Uh huh. Yeah, I I think uh, you see that the uh, yeah that, that's right yeah Princess Building. I I think that the uh, American engineering uh, corporations must must have been very famous. Uh, it could you know, be. Like, yeah. uh, Hong Kong Bank main office or something. Then you mm -hmm. probably didn't need to put a detailed address of what room. It would be on. I mean, and furthermore, it probably had many letters per day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so maybe. that the postman would probably know where to deliver it uh, instead. So, what's our O? Um, not, not too sure. What? Uh, what uh, yeah. Is, does it mean return? Return letter? No, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I've I've seen this before somewhere, but uh, it mm. doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. So it could be, yeah. I, 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 maybe I'll let you know <laughs> later. You know, I, I'm sure I've seen this before. Okay. Yeah. But do you do you think that it it looks the the Sam Shui pool has it been enhanced or something? You know that your cover and uh, was it Axel's cover or whatever the other one is? No, oh. no. I I I I I I do not have uh, the actual image of of both uh, these two examples. Yeah. I think the date of twenty first of May nineteen sixty nine. So those are images from from Hong Kong study circle or, or from from okay, that okay. Because part. that that envelope yeah. actually does look a little bit slightly different from the the one that you were showing, although it's mm -hmm. the same date. 
Yeah. Uh, well, in, 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 fact, in fact, when when I was doing the compression, I, I have no doubt about um the 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 I I uh, I have no doubt that they they they, they should be all, all, they should be identical. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe yeah. maybe oh, that, oh, that, oh, that, only that they, they are of the same days. That that yeah. <laughs> That, yeah. That's a little bit strange. Maybe one was slightly retouched, maybe. I don't know. That doesn't look very natural. You know, uh -huh. the, the one on the American Engineering Building. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the, the editor. It wasn't a very clear strike, and the, the editor mm -hmm. kind of retouched it a little bit. It yeah, so... Look uh, at the, yeah. the P. It looks a bit slightly, slightly different. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, well, you, you see that all the time with crowd. I mean, the crowd um, touched a lot of the CBS. Uh, mm -hmm. That, that uh, they, they actually, if you have the real thing, it doesn't look exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow. Simon. Yeah. yeah. Simon, I have uh, one very, very simple question and one comment. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is, what street was the prince's building on? Sorry, what street? What um, what street? Princess building on. That's Chatter Road. Chatter Road, or, 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 or that that's Wu Road. Well, that's the, next. Okay, I I show well, the picture. Go, go. Um, uh, opposite opposite to it to it. Uh, on the right side it is the Mandarin Hotel, and then uh, uh, you can see in front of the. Uh, in the in, in, in the bottom of the picture in, in fact what what was 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 the court and then on the left side uh uh were, were the standard charter bank building and also the hong kong bank building okay got it Prince building uh, is a very famous building right yeah in uh, exists in the long uh a long time yeah right uh, my comment is, I've got a new nickname for you, Simon. You are uh, like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well that study, that study is so detailed and so in depth, and so many um, what you, you call wild guesses are actually educated guesses based on all the research you did. I, it's a very fantastic presentation. Thank yeah. you, Mister Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. But well, well done, well done. Congratulations. Okay, uh, let, let me stop share. Okay. Uh, Presumably, see. there's also part three as well to this. Uh, uh yeah, and and uh, I, <laughs> I, I I hope I I, I can continue um <laughs> this, this, uh, this series of uh, oh. uh uh one day stand one story. One one last question. One last question. Yeah. Okay. You know that that the uh, I just noticed the freedom from hunger is actually a championship for Hong Kong, Hong Hong, right? Uh huh. So, so is that this uh, riddle, riddle, riddle swan guy, a philatelist or something? Because oh. I mean, was that used in error? Uh, you know, the Hong, uh, some triple Hong Hong was oh, all oh, right, right, on right. request it, of it, it, stamp collector. It, it, in fact, uh, I, 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 in fact, I, I did some research on on, on this guy, and uh, he he was a uh, 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 veterinary officer uh, uh, in 1963. Uh, and then he promoted to assistant director in late 1960s. Yeah. And then, in fact, he was the director, the top guy of the agricultural and forestry department in 1980. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and and I suppose he, he was quite senior at that time. Then mm. maybe he, he, he could just walk down to the central post office and yeah. ask, ask, ask the clerk, hey, uh, please put uh, this Hong Kong. Uh, they stamp on, on, on my first day cover. I, I know you 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 got it in your cabinet, something yeah. like that. Is this the first time they used Hong Kong or um no uh I'm not I'm not sure it's the first day or in fact Hong Kong. No, no, I mean I mean uh, is it the first time period. that they discovered that there's error of the CBS. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, Mr. Peter Shen, in, in fact, uh, was having quite quite some covers uh, back during that uh, Shen uh, yeah. Hong Kong uh, postmark. Yeah, possible somebody just discovered there was an error and then just, uh, you know, 
and let that everybody know when every every stamp collector flock to the Samsung Po <laughs> and ask for the CBS. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it could well have been sorry. It could well yeah. have been sent to him because it's um because it's freedom from hunger and agricultural. It's a souvenir uh -huh. rather yeah. than that to a stamp collector. Yeah. And and okay. In fact, there there, there is a collection of, of this freedom from hunger first day cover, uh, uh, posted in basically all existing branch post office at that time, uh, uh in 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 uh, CPA's website and and. Uh, and and the collector's name is Look You, something like that. And and there 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 is also a picture of, of that post office together with the first day cover. But the Shamshui Po, the Shamshui Po uh, example uh, of, of, of that collection, in fact, uh, uh, it, it's, it's just a Hong, Hong Kong uh, index number four, number five. Uh, I, 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 Remember, but it obviously it, 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 it is not an error. Uh, Hong Kong number eight. Okay, right, fine. Thank you very much. I think we we've got our, our last uh, uh, presentation mm. for today. Um, uh, upon the request of Charles, uh, I think Charles Chan has. Uh, we haven't actually seen him for a long time, so uh, he actually asked to uh, to show a few uh, his of his researches. Good. Uh, yeah. Yes. Good to see you, Charles. Long yeah, time no see. Long time no see. Uh, not really, because uh, well, busy in the business. <laughs> the company things. Well, I think uh, hoping today I can share uh, 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 something that is uh, 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 interesting to you, you guys, and uh, also uh, uh, with some in new information. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, I share my screen first. Can you hear me clearly or else? Very because clearly, I, yeah. Okay, because I use the headphone. Okay. Today I'm going to share uh, something concerning about the uh, registration marking of a link pole. Ingpo is always a difficult uh, 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 port. Uh, uh, many things are quite scarce and therefore um, not easy to collect anyhow. And uh, the first one I would like to share with you guys will be the... Uh, firstly, I need to give some background introduction. Uh, 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 Web. Web spoke comply in the 1960s, uh, uh, talking about uh, little things about the registration marking of a link pool, just uh, with uh, two, two sentences, okay? Uh, on page uh, 302, Web wrote that uh, one copy of the box of registration mark R with a link pool, uh, British PO is known, and it is uh, dated 1922, and it is believed that the R in a 20 mm circle was Sorry, also Charles, used. Sorry, I, I can Nepal. only see your file folder, the file yeah, name. I know. Not the okay, therefore I'm just saying that uh, 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 in the in the in the 1960s. Uh, web has a little records about the uh, Lingpo uh, 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 marking. Uh, sorry. I think I've got something wrong right here. What we're uh, talking about will be the Lingpo uh, uh, BPO uh, uh, marking. This page is uh, from uh, Prow, 
uh, saying that uh, this registration marking the earliest record day will be the uh, 1917, uh, April 7. And the latest day is uh, 22, November 15. Uh, this cover is the earliest record day by Plough as uh, 1917, April 7th, with the Lingpo uh, British uh, Post Office uh, uh, box marking. But unfortunately, one stem was missing over here. I believe it will be a four cents uh, over in China. Uh, very bad, uh, it is a missing cover, but this registration marking is the earliest record day of uh, uh, by plow. Okay. Charles, we, we still cannot see your unit. Can you see that? No. I already shared the things. Yeah, you, you are sharing the file folder. No. Uh, is it? Ah, nah, it's okay now. Okay, it is the Ningpo uh BPO uh, 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 uh registration marking on a cover that uh, 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 uh is the earliest record day by Plow. Okay, nineteen seventeen April seventh, but unfortunately. A one stem missing over here. I believe it will be four cents over in China. And this marking the right side was retouched by hand drawing. And also this marking, the type F, uh, Lingpo CDS, this part was also hand drawing. It is the back of the cover, okay, with a OVO Shanghai BPO registration, registered marking, dated knife. The next I'm going to share will be So sorry. Can you hear? Can you see the R marking? Yes. It is a ring pole uh, with a red R. Interestingly, in the uh, uh, in the twentieth century, many ports already using the the the, the, the inking of uh, 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 registration marking in black, except two ports. One will be the ring pole, another will be the tinjen. The tinjen box. Box registration marking is also in red, and Ningpo and the in the twentieth century still using the 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 the, the, the red red uh, owl, okay, and uh, this marking was mentioned by Sconville and also by uh, a Plow. It is the back of the cover, 
Interestingly, the back stem of a Shanghai is using is not using the OVO type, okay? Registered, registered uh, Shanghai, but using this type. I think this is a type type I. I think a Shanghai, okay? I don't know why. I think it's fairly common for the um, Shanghai not to use registered on the back of uh, in transit. Usually, they will use the uh, register Shanghai. The O for one will be as the transit for register mail. But I don't know why in O three they the, the, the it, 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 it did not using it. Okay. Another one will be the O5 cover of uh, Lingpo. It used the black owl, shako owl. And it is the only recorded in owl, in, in black inking. Scornfield mentioned in his book for the R in circle in the footnote he mentioned that black not yet recorded. Therefore, up to present to my information, it is the only recorded R in circle using black inking in Lingpo. Then you can see in that, it is usually using the register Shanghai BPO as the transit marking at the cover back. Okay, that uh, that is the free covers that I share today uh, with you guys, and uh, enjoy enjoy it. And it is uh, quite <laughs> nice that uh, well. Yeah, uh, my, my suggestion is that, that okay. you should enter the that one for the wild cup. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true because uh, uh, we we are looking for uh, for for. For candidate for the World Cup, and I don't know how many uh, Nick Harewood's got uh, uh, at the at the moment. You mean the you mean the black uh, R in circle? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Yes, as per your saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hopping show. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good idea. I mean, just to get a few more, uh, you know, the competitors instead of usually one or two. <laughs> well, uh, it is interesting that well, Lingpo is not a a a, a common uh, uh, no. port to collect because the point is that many of a Lingpo materials are quite scarce in the market mm. and finch a very high price. Mm. And uh, someone told me before what? that. No, no, no. Someone told me before that, okay, if you are making of a link poor material, so you cannot get a gold, so gold, or gold metal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, mm. therefore, um, it is quite nice that I got uh, uh, the registration marking of a link poor, uh, 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 free, free coffers, like I say. It's lucky for me, okay? Mm. Uh, not easy to get to, not easy to see in the market, anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Maybe new maybe new Granger will have some. I, I don't know. Yeah. You <laughs> might find uh, lots of I'm afraid so, yes. I've got three coming up. <laughs> 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 okay, good. Waiting for you. <laughs> waiting for me, okay. Yeah, waiting, waiting for, for you to call and, the market. Uh, yeah, and also uh, uh, share uh, this. But they are all red. Oh. They're all red R's, so you're okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, 
enjoy the evening and uh, thank you very much uh, well yeah. thank you for simon's uh, details uh, uh, research and yeah. also Andrew's uh, <laughs> concern about the CEF. Uh, okay, yeah. it's a we nice look, to meet you guys. You again. Okay, for me. We look forward to see you again next time. Yeah, provided I have time because, uh, <laughs> well, uh, still, well, at this so... time of the day, you certainly will have <laughs> in Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it has been a very nice evening, or uh, well, for us anyway, but uh, you know, the meeting has been uh, really very, very uh, educational. And um, well, I look forward to see you um, next month, I think. Yeah, that's right. Before we finish, yes. I just have oh, a note for Adrian. Um, I have mm -hmm. a description of the CEF combination cover from FPO number 11. And reading right. my description, it's got it's got a four cent Hong Kong in combination with the half Anna. And uh, going uh, on the back of the cover, it's got the base office B, obviously of Tianjin. So that one obviously did go for the back to the British Post Office. Oh, yeah. Oh, Neil, so, do you have any Shamsho Po official pay for me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Too modern. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Okay, we we look forward to your sale. I think it's in October, right? Yes, 25th, 26th of October. I shall be in Hong Kong. Oh, you look forward to seeing those who I can. Uh, well, you mean before that or at, at no, the... for the auction? The, the auction 25th, okay. 26th. I'll That's be good. there for the auction. Yeah. That's good to hear that. Okay, so we, we, maybe we'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have a drink together. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, uh, you know, you know, coming to the meeting, and I look forward to uh, seeing you uh, next month. And uh, it's goodbye for me. Have a nice day, evening, and uh, good night for me. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Andrew. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye.